Hi and welcome to Game Creation and this week we're going to tackle the mammoth task of collision detection. So at the moment the player can just walk freely through anything on our map, including the water. Now I don't mind them walking through the grass and the sand, but the water is a real problem. Um, at the moment there's kind of no interaction at all with the world. The player is just brutally moving through it without any kind of boundaries or rules of our world. Um, so what we want to do is just say, well, hang on, if the tile is water, I don't want the player to walk on it. And I want to try and do this in a really basic and simple way so that you can implement this in any kind of your, ga your games that you want. Click Team does a really great job of uh, collision detection, and this isn't going to be an intricate kind of uh, weird model of, of working out exactly pixel by pixel whether the things have collided. No, Pixel have already done all that hard work for you. Stick with that um, for for um, your projects, your normal projects. But this way of doing collision detection is really useful for very specific types of games and puzzle games um, come to mind straight away and the basic RPG that we're producing where everything's based on tiles and therefore Actually, you don't need to use uh, Click Team's collision detection. Actually, sometimes it can shift things out of tile, um, which you don't want. And sometimes it can make things clip, clip through things, which again, you don't want. Um, so instead of using Click Team's really clever, and it is really clever, when you look at the underlying sort of mathematics behind it, um, like, just don't bother rewriting that yourself. But you'll find yourself in a position in your game where actually you're like, well, everything's based on a grid, everything's based on tiles. Do I want to go through Click Team's process or do I want to go through the process which I'm going to go through this week? And all this process does is looks at where the player is, checks to see whether they can walk through the uh, adjacent tile. And if they can, it will walk through it. If they can't, it will stop it before it moves. And it's going to be so, so simple. And I'm not looking at really long videos this week just to kind of sell to you that actually this could be an alternative idea where it's appropriate. Um, so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this week because suddenly now we're interacting with the environment. One of the problems I see, though, um, this week is we have at the moment one sea tile, one water tile. But we might come up, or in fact we will come up, with all sorts of graphics for, you know, whether there's a whale in the water or whether it's it's the left edge of the water. And so I don't want to say if it's just that one sea tile, then you can't move into it. Because in the event editor, you end up with huge amounts of conditions saying, oh, is it this sea tile? Is it this sea tile? Is it this sea tile? So I want to look at the array and figure out whether we can use the array to not only store the tile type, so at the moment we've got zero being grass, one being water, two being sand, but we can also store whether you can walk in it, the, the actual like rules of that tile. Um, and we're going to look at using the Z-index 1, because at the moment we've stored everything in Z-index 0. And we're going to look at setting that up probably on Thursday's video. And on Friday we'll bring it all together. Um, I think tomorrow's video we need to relook at the size. I want everything to be the same size, so I want the player and the tiles to be the same size. So I think we'll get through that on Tuesday's uh, video. Um, so hopefully at the end of this week we've got a fully working, all the bells and whistles on collision detection for our game. I hope you enjoy this week. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you want to see more from us, please click subscribe. We release videos every single weekday at 7pm UK time. Thank you.